This is the Aperture LS 600X Pro Lite coming in at around $2,000. And this is the GVM Pro SD 650B Lite that is $1,000 cheaper. Now, if you're a videographer, there are a lot of benefits of having a light this bright, and we're gonna cover four use case scenarios. Now, when we think about who these lights are for, the first use case scenario when you need a light like this is really for lighting a large space. Believe it or not, it is completely dark outside and I just have one light in my office completely blasting against the opposite side of the room and it's lighting up this entire room as if there's sunlight coming in. Now in filmmaking, they use this technique all the time to bounce light off of something in order to light a large space. Sometimes they'll bounce the light off of a wall or a ceiling or they may use a reflector board or even some fabric in order to get large soft lighting. Now for this shot, it was super simple. I just put out my light, set it to 100% at daylight color temperature and I just blasted it into the wall and it did a really good job of just lighting up my entire room so I can shoot this YouTube video at nighttime. This also might be a good idea for you if you do have a smaller office and it's hard for you to get a big softbox inside your room or your office, you might just wanna try utilizing your walls instead of a super large softbox. Another useful scenario for using a light this bright is for lighting through a window in the room you're filming. Now for this shot right here, I decided to throw the GVM outside of the window with the reflector dish on pointing straight through the curtains. Now the curtains really softened up the image and I thought it was almost maybe a little bit too soft. So I also tried opening the curtains a little bit to let more of that light shine through. And this is a much brighter summary type of look that I was really pleased with compared to the before. And the great thing about this kind of light is it's bicolor. So you're gonna have a warm light and a much cooler light so you can really adjust it to look a little bit more like sunset or midday. You also can use these lights outside. Now out here, it was still very cloudy and so I just wanted a little bit of extra light. And these things are so bright that on this cloudy day, I was really only using these at about 3% to get this shot. And this just shows you that on a bright sunny day, you could actually bring these out and use this as a key light. One of my favorite outdoor setups is when you're in the shade and then you bring in an extra key light and this makes your shot look super good and it still gives that bright look that you want when you're outside, but it's still beautiful soft lighting. Now, one last reason on why you would want a light this bright is if you are going to shoot in high frame rates or in slow motion. When you shoot in higher frame rates and your shutter speed goes up as well with that, your camera is going to let less light in. So you need to pump more light for your shots in order for it to look good. Now this shot is at 120 frames per second. And I found that this light, even with a softbox, gave me more than enough light. Now the GVM light actually turns out to have a higher CRI rating compared to the aperture of about 96 plus versus the aperture's 95 plus. As seen in the comparisons, GVM and Aperture have deficiencies in red and blue data. However, all LED lights have challenges with this, which makes it difficult to get a perfect readout. So overall, both these lights are exceptional in these testings. A few other key differences is that the GVM light has a quieter fan built into it. And I had this thing running full blast in my bedroom for quite a few hours. And I was actually really surprised that there was not a loud fan going on because typically with lights like this that get very bright, they need some heavy duty fans, but they've done a great job of keeping the sound down. And so that it's very quiet so you can shoot your videos. Now, both of these lights are bi-color, which makes them super versatile for filming. However, the GVM can go to 6,800 Kelvin versus the Aperture, which can only go to 6,500 Kelvin. Now, one of the things I really noticed, especially when I was at a lower percentage and I wasn't blasting this light full brightness, was that GVM had a much cooler light and it looked a lot more accurate on a cloudy day like when I was filming versus the Aperture, which was just a bit too warm and it seemed a little bit unnatural. And so for me, that's a huge plus to GVM for having that versatility, especially to go that cool while still being at a very low percentage of brightness, which oftentimes we really need these lights dialed way back. Now, both of these lights do have effects and the GVM actually has three more effects than Aperture. However, not all of these effects are maybe worth using. 
but I'd rather have them than not have them at all. Now, after using these lights, I've noticed that both of them have really good build quality. And traditionally, GVM seems to cut back on the build quality in order to keep their lights so affordable, but this time they seem to have a really good build quality. Even though I think the aperture just looks a little bit cooler with the branding, I still think the build quality on both of these lights are fantastic. One of the things about the GVM that I don't like as much as the aperture is the cord length from the light to the power box. You'll see here that it barely reached and this was probably the minimum distance that I would need it to go up because I wanna get that light above me while I'm standing. And so there's other times where I might want this light a bit higher and in order to do that, I would have to move the entire box up on the stand. Whereas on the aperture light, you have a much longer cable, which is preferred because you can get that light way up in the air and not worry about if it's still going to stay connected. Now, when it comes to the build quality of the bags that hold these lights, this is where GVM, I think, really decided to cut back on the cost. Whereas Aperture, it's more expensive, but you have a much nicer bag to go with it. There's wheels on the bottom and it even has a pull-up handle to make this super easy to lug around. Those are some of the key differences, but now let's talk about some of the similarities between these two lights. As far as powering these lights go, they both come with a big power brick that goes onto your light stand and both of them have V-mount options so that you can use these lights on the go. To control these lights, you can easily do it on the power brick that comes with the light. However, they both have certain apps if you wanna use your phone, which I find super handy and I love having an actual app where you can just easily connect it to the light and control it from your phone or your iPad. Now, the real question is who are these lights for and is the aperture worth the extra $1,000? Now let's keep this short and sweet. If you're looking for a very bright professional video light that is color accurate and a thousand dollars cheaper, then the GVM is totally worth it. I was very impressed with this light, especially with the price tag that they decided to put on it. However, if you're just shooting YouTube videos like this, this light is probably going to be overkill for you because of how heavy it is and it's probably too bright for your needs. And so if you're looking for a fantastic video light that is a bit cheaper, then click on the screen and check out this video and we'll see you in the next one.